Okay, uh, today is the 29th of, uh, of January 2022, and uh, also on the 29th of uh, January, uh, but uh, 1845, this very important poem by this very important poet, Edgar Allan Poe, was published. And this is the reason I thought of talking today about architecture and the Reverend. But before I do that, please allow me to read this beautiful poem, very, very moving poem. Uh, thank you very much. And I will begin now to read the poem and then we'll talk about um, architecture and the Reverend. So the Reverend by Edgar Allan Poe, as I said, first published on January 29th, 1845. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered, weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Tis some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door, only this and nothing more. Ah, distinctly I remember it was in the bleak December. Just a second, it's not moving the page forward. And each separate dying, I hope this is the, the second page. Ah, sorry. And each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow, vainly I sought to borrow from my books sur surcease of sorrow sorrow for the lost Lenore, for the rare radiant, radiant maiden, maiden whom the angels name Lenore, nameless here forevermore. And the silken sad uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before. So that now to still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating this some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. Some late visitor in entreating entrance at my chamber door, that this is it, this is this it is, and nothing more. Presently my soul grew stronger, hesitating then no longer. Sir, I said, I or maiden, truly your forgiveness I implore. But the fact is I was napping, and so gently you came rapping, and so faintly you came tapping tapping at my chamber door. That I scarce was sure I heard you. Here I opened wide the door, darkness there and nothing more. Deep into that darkness peering, long I stood there wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before. But the silence was unbroken and the stillness gave no token. And the only word there spoken was the white whispered word Lenore. This I whispered and an echo murmured back the word Lenore, merely this and nothing more. Back into the chamber turning all my soul within my burning, or within me burning, soon again I heard the tapping somewhat louder than before. Surely, said I, surely that this is, that is something at my window lattice. Let me see then. What the, the, rit, the, the, the rit is uh, in this mystery explore. Let, me let my heart be still a moment and this mystery explore this, this, the, the window and nothing more. Open here I flung the shutter when with many a flirt and flutter in there stepped a stately raven of the saintly days of yore. Not the least obey obedience made me made he not a mean he stopped or stayed he, but with mean of lord or lady perched above my chamber door, perched upon a bust of palace just above my chamber door, perched and set and nothing more. Then this ebony bird, beguiling my sad fancy into smiling by the grave and stern decorum of the countenance it wore, Though thy crest be sworn and shaven to thee, I said, art sure no craven, ghostly grim an ancient raven wandering from the nightly shore. Tell me what thy lordly name is on the night's Plutonian shore, quoth, quoth the raven, nevermore. Much I marveled 
this ungainly foal to, to hear this course so plainly, though it answer, it's answered little meaning, little relevancy bore, for we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door, bird or beast upon the sculpture passed above his chamber door with such name as nevermore. But the Reverend, sitting lonely on the placid bust, spoke only that one word, as if his soul in that one word he did outpour. Nothing further than he uttered, not a feather than he fluttered, till I scarcely more than muttered, other friends have flown before, on the morrow he will uh, leave me as my hopes have flown before. Then the bird said, nevermore startled at the, at the stillness broken by reply so aptly spoken doubtless said i what it utters is its only stock and store caught from some unhappy master whom unmerciful disaster followed fast and followed faster till his songs one burden bore till the dirges of his hope that melancholy burden bore of never nevermore but the raven still be willing, all my fancy into smiling, straight I wield a cushioned seat in front of bird and bust and door. Then upon the velvet sinking, I betook myself to linking, fancy unto fancy, thinking that this ominous bird of yore, what this grim, ungainly, ghastly, gaunt and ominous bird of yore meant in croaking, nevermore. This I set in gauge in guessing, but no syllable expressing to the foal whose fiery eyes now burned into my bosom score. This and more I set divining with my head at ease reclining on the cushion's velvet lining that the lamp light gloated over. But whose velvet violet lining with the lamp light gloating over, she shall press, ah, nevermore. Then, me thought the air grew denser, perfumed from an unseen censer, swung by seraphine whose foot falls tinkled on the tufted floor. Wretch, I cried, thy, ghost has, thy God has lent thee you by these angels he has sent you. Respite, respite of nippings from the memories of Lenore. Quaff. Oh, quaff this kind nep nep nepenthe and forget this lost Lenore, quoth, quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, think of evil, prophet still, if bird or devil, whether tempter sent or whether tempest tossed thee here ashore, desolate yet all down undaunted on this desert land enchanted, on this home by horror haunted. Tell me truly, I implore, is there, is there balm in Gilead? Tell me, tell me, I implore, quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, think of evil, prophet still, if bird or devil, by that heaven that bends us above us, by that God we both adore, tell this soul with sorrow laden, if within the distant Aden, it shall clasp a Satan, sainted maiden whom the angels name Lenore. Clasp a rare and radiant maiden whom the angels name Lenore, quoth the raven, nevermore. Be what word or sign of parting, bird or fend, I shrieked, upstarting, get thee back into the tempest into the, in, in the night's Plutonian shore. Leave no black plume as a token of that lie thy soul has spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken. Quit the bust above my door. Take thy beak from out my heart and take thy form from off my door. Quoth the raven, nevermore. And the raven never flitting, still is city, sitting, still is sitting on the pallid bust of Pallas just above my chamber door. And his eyes have all the seeming of a demon that is dreaming and the lamplight over him streaming throws his shadow on the floor. 
and my soul from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted nevermore. So uh, <laughs> I didn't read it very well. I, I, I apologize. Um, I never read it actually in, in English. Uh, I only read it uh, translated, but um, um, let's go now to architecture and let's see if there is a, any relationship between this uh, poem, which deserves to be read carefully uh, uh, and architecture. And this is what I'm trying to do now, to see if there is a possible relationship between architecture and the Reverend. On this day when in 1845, this poem, famous poem by a famous poet who died young, unfortunately, Edgar Allan Poe was published. So architecture and the Reverend and uh, um, you'll see some uh, some uh, buildings that uh, in my opinion do connect with the poem by uh, um, Edgar Allan Poe unfortunately I had here an image which I, I see now is not showing uh, this is a, an image that I, I saw uh, published uh, on the web calls the Reverend because this was what the what the Reverend continuously said nevermore of course the Reverend is a symbol of, of darkness of death of uh, the, the, the immutability of, uh, of uh, sometimes uh, what we call uh, destiny. And how can we bring, uh, you know, the awareness of that darkness into, into architecture? I also found this image, which I placed on the, on the invitation that I sent out, you know, it, would the shadow of the raven be white if the, if the bird itself is black? It's a question. Probably not. Probably the shadow will still be uh, dark. But uh, uh, maybe uh, if we consider the, the Reverend in its relationship with architecture, uh, an implausible uh, relationship, maybe the whiteness belongs to that transgression and that transformation, that metamorphosis, that art, and I include here architecture as well, is able to uh, uh, give birth to or to generate. So let's look at some works, most of them black, most of them dark, most of them indeed connectable with, uh, uh, with, a, with a black uh, um, ominous bird as uh, Edgar Allan Poe calls uh, the Raven. Let's begin with this uh, excellent work by Farshid Musavi from 2012, the Museum of Contemporary Art in Cle Cleveland, uh, USA. So uh, I'll read a few words. This huge black steel clad prismatic structure is home to Mocha Cleveland, which is one of the world's biggest non-collecting museums at an impressive 3,159 square meters. Its cultural form has a dramatic mirror finish, which is designed to reflect its urban surroundings, both literally and symbolically while five of the slides of the sides are covered in this metallic finish the entrance to the museum is constructed entirely of clear glass through which visitors enter into a soaring atrium here they are greeted by the centerpiece of the building a ground staircase that leads to the upper floors where the ceiling is painted a vivid blue this is the building uh, and she is a very good architect and uh, um, you know, um, I mean, I can say a few things about Cleveland because I, I, it happened that I spent there some hours, uh, uh, some, some years ago. And, uh, you know, I, I even wonder why such a museum would, would be there because uh, I had some uh, very depressing uh, impressions or perceptions uh, in that city. Anyway, the building is good. And it's probably even better than the museum also with elements of darkness and blackness built by Zaha Hadid in Cincinnati, also in Ohio. Um, so this is the building that we are talking about. Let's call such buildings our ravens today, you know, the, the, the ominous birds. I'm, I'm, I will present ominous architecture today, but you know, it's, is it truly really ominous? I mean, yes, there is darkness, but because of the of the excellence of the of the design, uh, I think uh, uh, what appears to be you know uh, ominous or depressing or uh, you know pessimistic 
uh, is actually uh, because of its quality is uplifting. At least for me, it is. But at this point, uh, point, I want to say something which I think is important. I think any creator in any field uh, operates somehow in some similar ways. In what sense? Maybe at bottom we are all, or we wish we are, or we could be could be alchemists to transform raw material into 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 spirit essentially the the, the alchemists try to transform uh, lead into gold well as the true alchemy said uh, aurum nostrum non est aurum vulgi our our gold is not a vulgar one is the psychological one is the soul it is the it's the psychic gold so but in in uh, in uh, european alchemy at least there are three phases blackening or nigredo then whitening or uh, um, um, albedo and the third one rubedo or reddening but the first one is is blackening nigredo nigredo is the first phase of alchemy well these buildings you know uh, uh, inspired in a way for our presentation by the ominous bird that Edgar Allan Poe talked about, are, are black, are dark, are related to Nigredo. And, and this is the first stage in the process of achieving psychological gold, arriving at the shore, so to speak, arriving at some kind of a true enlightenment. And so this darkness, this blackness, uh, has a meaning. Has a, here is the architect in front of her building. She's a, a, a very good architect, and she even published interesting books, you know, uh, like the function of ornament and uh, you know other books. She, she's a, a, an interesting architect. Um, so this is her building. Not everything is black. Of course, the inside is luminous, but the carcass of the building is black. There are many black buildings built in, uh, in, in contemporary architecture. We are going to see some of them. And I, I began with this building in Cleveland, Ohio. Now we go to a church in Norway. We'll see another building from Nor Norway, a museum for Knut Hamsun, built by um, uh, Stephen uh, Hall. But let's look at this church. It's, uh, it was built, of course, anonymously. We don't know who built it in the 12th century. It's an old building, of course. So despite being a simple building made purely out of wood, this is the oldest standing state church in the world. It's actually the fourth church to be erected on the site, but the original timber and carvings are incredibly more than 1,000 years old, situated in the breathtaking Sognef Fjord. The church and its timber frame construction was hugely innovative for the time and extremely complex. What had previously been expressed only in stone in Europe's grand cathedrals is realized here in local timber and crafted entirely by hand. Celtic symbolism and traditional Christian motifs are intertwined in elaborated carved scenes. This rare structure is on the UNESCO World Heritage site list and is a popular choice for weddings. I only have a picture of it, is this one. So it's, it's, it's quite old, but it's well preserved. And, uh, it, you know, it is uh, more or less black. We could call it, you know, uh, the, 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 Raven, uh, the Raven Church. Now, a building in Japan by Satoshi, uh, by Apollo Architects and Associates uh, uh, from 2010. Uh, I don't usually like to, to read text, but I have this text here, so I'll read it. Forgive me, I'm not sure I do the right thing because I really don't like to read at all. While this imposing Japanese home has a big presence on this residential street, it's actually a very intimate house with a smooth, dark facade, almost entirely unbroken by windows or external glazing to give the family privacy. Soaring upwards, the black cantilevered volume hovers above the ground to create a generous balcony 
which is protected by black stained timber louvers that allow for unbroken views out towards the street from the kitchen. To make up for the lack of windows on the exterior, the home features an internal courtyard with the living spaces wrapped around it, providing plenty of much needed daylight and air circulation to the two-story building. This is the building. Uh, dark, <laughs> dark indeed, and let's call it uh, the Raven uh, itself, the ominous rev uh, Raven uh, in today's presentation. Now another one from the Netherlands, Roads and Waterworks Support Center. Uh, I don't know if I should read this. No, I will not read it any longer. The text, this is the building. They are self-explanatory, these images. So again, for those of you who came later uh, to this presentation, uh, we are paying homage to a great poem by a great poet, The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe, which was published on the 29th of the January, 1845. And by the way of the Raven and the connotations related to this dark bird, this ominous bird, as Edgar Allan Poe um, um, refers to, uh, I show black architecture or dark architecture, but most of it is actually black. Um, now, I, now, I, now I regret I, I didn't read, let, let, let me read. While this unusual trapezoidal building might seem like a bold and slightly abstract choice for a government agency. Can you believe it? This is a government agency. Wow, <laughs> not too many governments would accept something like this. Uh, but anyway, um, it's actually a less dramatic design than you might think. The Netherlands has a long-standing history of, of black buildings. Interesting, I didn't know this. And uh, the establishment is also designed to echo the height and silhouette of the dike which is an iconic feature of the surrounding landscape. The unusual shape is actually designed that way to cut okay. for, uh, Please turn off the microphone. I hear some noise in the background. Thank you. For the multifunctional nature of this department, the garages and workshops at the heart of the building are situated in expensive rooms with high ceilings, while the administrative offices have a more intimate feel in the lower Peripheral, par peripheral parts of the structure. So it's a governmental building, if you can believe it, in the Netherlands. Bravo to them. Who would have, who would have imagined this kind of uh, government building in, uh, in many other countries? Now, uh, residence in Canada by architecture open form. Uh, the now black facade, uh, it was a 19th century building in Montreal's Plateau Mount Roy Royal neighborhood is actually a happy accident. The couple were renovated the property, stripped away the badly damaged corrugated metal exterior. It used to be housing for the groomsmen of wealthy residents of nearby St. Joseph Boulevard to discover the original wood cladding underneath. They decided then to carefully restore it and in keeping with the historical district's preservation restraints, painted it in black. The result is actually distinctly modern. At night, the external and internal lighting reveals the subtle historical details that have been cleverly incorporated into this new family home. It's a, it's a, you know, a restoration, uh, but, but blackness uh, makes the, the building stand out. And some people might be, you know, superstitious and, and uh, uh, be hesitant to move or live in such a building because of the blackness. How said uh, this in Scotland by Raw Architecture from 2013, inspired by the ever present stormy skies, this broad, broody timber clad home in the Scottish Highlands masterfully blends into its surroundings while making the most of its spectacular scenery. It was built for a young local couple on a tricky hillside plot that has a distinctive double gabled form so that the pair could maxim maximize views of the sun rising over the mountains in the east and watch it as it, it sets behind the islands to the west. The stained timber cladding also references the abundant peat and gorse growing on the land as the house is situated on former rough grazing pastures for local uh, livestock. 
The drama of the three-story home increases the higher up you go. The spaces gradually become lighter and larger with the top level boasting vast double height spaces. This is the building. Black again, a raven again. Maybe uh, Edgar Allan Poe would have liked it. Now, Concrete House number two in Spain by A. Ayacero, 2011. Uh, I don't know. Again, I'm tired to, to read this. This striking uh, monolithic uh, building is actually a family home that's been cast entirely in black tinted concrete made up of a series of linked trapezo trapezoids. The house located just outside of Madrid has a central volume that is then supported by six extensions that carve up the internal living arrangement and provide additional external spaces. The interior mirrors the exterior by following a monochromatic scheme of gray, black, and white decor and built-in furniture that mimics the geometric shapes of the external structure. Large sliding glass panels on one side of the house open up on, onto the garden, which boasts a contemporary pond and landscape loan that gradually steps down the sloping side. And uh, you see even the sides of, uh, you know, this uh, stepped uh, garden are painted in black. And this is the building, all black, all raven, all ominous. Uh, you know, uh, most people would reject a uh, black house, but uh, apparently the Spanish couple embraced it. Uh, there, are, there are many buildings actually that are black. And uh, you wonder why were they, uh, well, if we have so many white buildings, why shouldn't we also have many white, uh, many black buildings? Uh, because uh, as I said, uh, in, in the alchemical process, albedo or whitening is the second um, phase uh, after nigredo or blackening. So if you have whiteness, I guess you should have also, or you could have a blackening or blackness. Uh, this building from the 11th century in Denmark, uh, situated on the Faroe uh, Islands uh, is this uh, King's Farm, uh, which is potentially one of the, the oldest inhabited wooden houses in the world. Uh, here it is. Well, not everything is black. The, the, you know, the, the base is stone uh, and then, uh, you know, reddish windows with a frame. But uh, there is blackness still. You know, apparently from the 11th century, but it was, uh, you know, remade, refurbished. Uh, uh, who knows? Who knows uh, how the original uh, elements look like today? Anyway, now the Domo Dom House in Poland uh, from 2013. This unusual looking home is a result of strict local building regulations built for a lone gardener. Interesting, a house built for a gardener, the metal clad cube dramatically slopes towards the sky to make way for the owner's much wanted garage. And also cleverly complies with the requirement for a gabled roof that re to remain in keeping with the local architecture, which includes preserved bomb shelters, bomb shelters and forts. The architect chose to clad the home in titanium zinc plates which is a material that is used traditionally in the area near Krakow, in the near, near the Krakow fortress. And this is the building. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> indeed, uh, the garage uh, made its way towards life uh, by uh, distorting, uh, you know, the, the, above, uh, yeah, the above part of the, of the building. So now uh, another building for these islands, Faroe Islands, these tiny 25 square meter domes on the island of uh, Euridit were made to accommodate tourists to the island. These cost, cozy self-contained shelters are super efficient with off the grid heating, plumbing and electrical systems and black painted wood that helps with heat absor absorption during the cold winters. Made up of 21 pine and plywood hexagons, the domes feature turf roofs, again, to provide insulation and hexagon-shaped windows with stunning sea views. Each dome 
contains a miniature kitchen complete with a wood burning stove plus a small living space with storage and a loft for sleeping that's accessed via a ladder. So, well, not everything is black, but I guess the, the you know, the, yeah, the, the polygons that compose the walls are, uh, <laughs> I was counting here, this is not a hexagon. These are, but this is not. Anyway, um, nor where the windows are. So, and now this is a website, We Urbanist. It's an interesting uh, website uh, with uh, showing five dark examples of monochromatic architecture, which I just showed. Solid black isn't a typical choice for most architecture. It's stark and imposing, seeming to send a message that booms go away. But sometimes it works. These 15 or black monochromatic buildings use techniques like unusual textures, cutouts, cantilevering, and pops of bright colors to soften the effect. And some just revel in their darkness. So let's call them our revens today. A building in Tokyo. Interesting. Complicated name seen then by Klein, Bitham, I don't know. No, no, neither the name of the building nor the name of the architect are really Japanese. Even in a city with hundreds of unique and eye-catching houses, this one stands out. This building uh, seen then by uh, Klein Ditham architecture, black residence salon covered in white illustrations, meant to attract those who have their own style and seek a perfect hideaway. The house functions like a giant canvas and has a surprisingly bright and open feeling interior. This is the building with a, you know, a phantasmagoric uh, illustrative decoration uh, inscribed on the or drawn on the on the black on the black facade. So it's possible to do such a such a building. You make a very geometrical, almost minimalist building, or okay, let's say black, and then you can uh, draw something with white, but not only white on its facade, just like uh, this architect did here. Why not? Why is it that the Japanese are so open-minded as opposed to, you know, many other parts of the world? Anyway, uh, here I see it's drawn with, uh, with the blue. I don't know what happened. The white line became blue. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, it could be white, it could be black. Uh, now another house by Mark Keller. The little protruding pieces on the exterior of this black residence by Dutch architect. Again, I call the Dutch the Japanese of Europe. They are the most experimental. Japanese architects are also experimental. The, the, the Netherlands architecture are also the same way. Serve more than just a decorative function. They act as trellis, trellises for climbing vines. The, this house is located on a very small plot of land in a suburb of Amsterdam, and Keller says is designed as a monolithic sculptural mass expressed by contrasting introverted private spaces that form the mass with open collective spaces that have been carved out from the solid volume as a continuous transparent void, visually and physically connecting them to the street. The garden and roof terrace. Unfortunately, I only have these uh, these images for now. Uh, I wish I, I had more images and larger, but you still get a feeling. It's essentially some kind of a black cube. But you look at, uh, at, at the elevation done with uh, these black uh, green, black black uh, black uh, bricks. Uh, the minimalist black house by Momo architect. This home maintains the traditional shape of Polish houses, but brings it firmly into the 21st century with an unusual all-made black exterior in the form of a plastic insulation material called thermoplan. Durable and weatherproof, the material is available in any color. The building is, is black, it's black like hell, but uh, uh, apparently this material is magical, so please, uh, please consider it. Um, okay, Sandhouse, Soundhouse by these people, 
uh, going beyond the usual effort to soundproof the interior of a music studio, these architects and Jefferson shared architects covered the outside of sand house with insulating material too. The, the overall aesthetic of the black rubber quilt is intended as a literal translation of the need to acoustically contain the building's use, says this person. Um, yeah, I, 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 I don't like to read, but uh, maybe it's useful to read a little bit. I don't know. Another black house. Uh, this one in Portugal looks like a formidable black fortress. Uh, we have so much white buildings in Portugal, not only those of uh, uh, Alvaro Siza, but others as well. But look, we have also uh, black. And here it is, black like hell. Again, Portugal. You will see on the, on the right uh, some whiteness. Uh, uh, it's the preferred uh, color, although white is not considered a color. Uh, for Portuguese architecture, but you can see uh, there are rebels in uh, Portuguese architecture as well. Uh, hotel by uh, Axis Diana, uh, stacked rectangular volumes covered in windows make up the Axis Viana Hotel by this uh, office BHM in Portugal, again, the combination of voids between the cantilevered levels of the building and all of that sky reflecting glass helps soften its dark angular appearance. Here it is, an unexpected, uh, uh, you know, blackness in the, in the country of excessive whiteness. But where you have a lot of whiteness, you also need a lot of blackness and vice versa. Now we are waiting for redness, for rubedo. The Black Panther building by GS Architects, a knife like, like cantilever and glossy black exterior, give this uh, Uniop uh, God group headquarters in Graz in Austria an impressive sense of drama. GS Architects gave this building the nickname Black Panther, intending a sculpture like aesthetic with dynamic sharp edges. Here it is. You know, an architecture similar to a building built by Günther Dominik in Vienna and also uh, uh, certain buildings by uh, Zaha Hadid, but this is painted in black or uses material that is uh, you know, black by itself. A family house by this uh, Tamizo architects, this it's a proposal uh, for a Polish uh, architecture. Uh, Okay, let's look at it. It was not built black again, all of it. Now we go to this uh, museum in Liechtenstein by Meinrad, uh, Liechtenstein State Museum of Modern and Contemporary Art in Vaduz was designed by Swiss architects. You read their names there. Uh, completed in the year 2000, the Black Museum is made of tinted concrete and basalt stone with river pebbles embedded in the exterior to echo the landscape of the Rhine Valley. Here it is, a uh, black box. Uh, you don't see the blackness so well in these pictures, but apparently it is black. Now the glass house by Kai Stania in Vienna uh, with an expansive frame and large panels of glass. This architect's private home in Vienna is simple, but certainly not boring. Stania wanted to make a strong design statement in a sustainable home that requires very little maintenance, turning to trespass on panels for the exterior. Wow, I don't know what those are, but I guess we can find out. These smooth and glossy eco-friendly panels have the appearance of polished black mar marble, but are cost effective and will stay looking new for many years. Uh, here we see two pictures of this uh, house, black house uh, built in Vienna. And now we go to the Black Diamond in Denmark. This waterfront expansion to the Royal Danish Library in, in Copenhagen in Denmark was nicknamed the Black, black Diamond in reference to its glittering Polish granite cladding and faceted shape. Designed by architect Schmidt Hammer Lesson. The building is divided in the center by a glazed crevasse that lets natural light into the central atrium. I wish I had more pictures, but this is just an ad memoir of uh, 
Ravens in architecture. Now the Black Maze building in Berlin. It's easy to see why this building is nicknamed Black Maze. The L40 building in Berlin is made of matte black concrete and was designed to pack as much space into a tiny lot in the city's cultural center as possible. Designed by these architects, the L40 is a residential and commercial building consisting of stacked volumes punctuated with roof terraces and open galleries. It's not too bad, you know, it's, uh, and it's certainly standing out in its context. So it is in Berlin, all black. Now the Black Cube House by Kameleon Lab, an existing home in Warsaw, Poland was expanded with additional rooms and the black steel frame and covered in black painted wood panels. The black cube by Cameleon Lab architects looks like a solid black volume from one angle, but colorful voids within the overall shape give it a sense of lightness. Uh, well, the black cube is more uh, apparent uh, at the top, uh, at the bottom we see something else, but still, you know, uh, chopped off, so to speak, cube. The Asahi Flame Building in Tokyo, uh, which was built by uh, uh, a French designer, um, my uh, celebrated uh, not too long ago. Uh, here it is. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's a building by Philip Stark. One of Tokyo's most notorious buildings uh, is the, the Asahi flame located on the banks of Sumida. The flame is not black, the flame is golden. So the golden swig squiggle atop the monolithic black building has been dubbed the golden turn by locals who aren't exactly impressed with the artistry of the architect, Philip Stark. Uh, here it is, uh, actually this building is not his, it's this one, the black one. Uh, you don't see it very well and it has the golden flame uh, on top of it. Uh, and now the Knut Hamsu Museum. Here I have more pictures because I really like this building by Stephen Hall and I also like Knut Hamsu. And if you like literature, good literature, and if you didn't read Knut Hamsu, I, 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 I suggest to you, you read an excellent uh, writer. And I would start perhaps with a very little book called Hunger by Knut Hamsu, truly a brilliant uh, writer who unfortunately was naive enough to like uh, the Nazi movement and to admire even Hitler. And because of it, he was, uh, you know, uh, in a problematic position with his own country and the world at large, but he did receive the Nobel Prize in literature and he, and he did deserve it and he does deserve it. And this building by Stephen Hall is, um, is a great homage to uh, Knut Hamsun. So taking inspiration from the black rocks and white snow of the Swiss Alps, uh, architects Swiss Alps, uh, that's, uh, they, they arrived there in Norway, I didn't know this. I took the, I took the, the text from, um, uh, from the web, but I'm a little bit surprised of what I read here. Anyway, architect Stephen Hall created an unusual home for the Knut Hamsu Museum in Norway. You are not seeing things. The building is just a little bit off kilter. Its exterior is covered in dark black wood, which is commonly seen on the region's churches. Says Stephen Hall, this strange, surprising and phenomenal, phenomenal experiences in space, perspective and light provide an inspiring frame for exhibitions. The building is conceived as an archetypal an intensified compression of spirit in space and light, concretizing a Hamsun character in architectonic terms. Hamsun is known as Norway's most inventive 20th century uh, writer. And indeed, he was a brilliant uh, writer. But Nor uh, Norway had other brilliant writers like the absolutely uh, uh, formidable uh, Henry Gibson. Uh, so this is the building by uh, Stephen Hall, and I think is one of his best uh, uh, best creations. Uh, the blackness of the building is not so apparent in all conditions of light, of course, but uh, you see the difference between the the museum he built for Knut Hamsun and uh, you know the little houses around um, 
you know, where, where people live. Um, so it's black wood uh, and uh, it does stand out um, in, in, in the landscape quite uh, impressively. It's truly an excellent building by Stephen Cole. Um, there are common themes running through his work and those who work his, who know his work realize that here is a variation of some other themes that he explored, but, but he's not truly repeating himself. This is an original work and I think it's quite, um, it's quite good. So this is the Knut Hamsun Museum in Norway, built by Stephen Cole uh, um, Architects or uh, associate and associates. I don't know exactly what the name of his um, uh, of his office is. A page, uh, you know, Stephen Cole always does this. Um, he conceptualizes. Um, the, the making of the building through watercolors done by himself with notations and so on. And I like the, I like the, draw, the drawing as well. You see, building equals a body equals a, uh, the, the battleground of invisible forces. So there is, um, it's the locus of conflict. And uh, it is, uh, you know, somewhat uh, cubical, uh, the building, but uh, the tensions of, of a battleground of, of uh, uh, invisible forces are still uh, there within, contained, but still, uh, um, uh, you know, you, you can feel them. A, a, a very good building by uh, by Stephen Hall. It couldn't be better, in my opinion, and uh, I think quite uh, quite remarkably uh, appropriate for Knut Hamsun. Here is a, some some great celebration uh, taking place uh, with the Norwegians, probably paying homage to Knut Hamsun as I wish we would one day pay homage to uh, you know important. Uh, artists and writers and uh, others uh, in, in our country. But it seems it takes a long time to arrive there. Anyway, another uh, watercolor, uh, conceptual watercolor by Stephen Hall for the building. Is the building a raven? I mean, the symbolism of the raven is complex. You know, it's, it's about death, it's about uh, you know the 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 yes the the you know the yes the 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 limits of life, the limits of in in the poem by Edgar Allan Poe is about uh, Lenore, probably the 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 beloved woman in the life of the poet who who died, so you know the raven is uh, is uh, provoking great emotion in 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 the poet. And the, and the bird keeps saying, never more, never more. What is this never more? It's, it's, it's something that we, we all are confronted with or we will be confronted with, you know, with the implacability of, of destiny, of fate. So, you know, uh, could we do an architecture which assumes this never more? Probably yes. And maybe, you know, like Ingmar Berman said, Ingmar Berman said, I spent all my, the great Swedish film director, he said, I don't spend one single day when I do not think about death. And it's not because of a more, uh, quest for morbidity, no, quite the opposite. For a, uh, it was uh, uh, through an, uh, for an attempt to intensify life, to truly value every second, because you know one day it will be over. Uh, here is a last picture with this uh, remarkable building by Stephen Hall. And um, yes, um, architecture, landscape, great writing, great architecture. And today, as I said, in 1845, the great poem, The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe was published. Uh, okay. 
uh, we'll go we'll go forward we'll see a few other things uh, this presentation is not too long this is the model of the building by Stephen Hall and now we I'll show three images from John Haydock. John Haydock, a rather, I would say, dark uh, uh, architect. Um, in fact, all his work has uh, you know, a certain connection with what we might call darkness. But I just show these things to two or three images, uh, rather architectonic installations. Uh, this might have been actually uh, in, in Norwegian, maybe in, in Oslo. Uh, I'm not sure exactly where it was built. Then um, a, a cryptical architect, a poetical architect, and I suggest you study, um, you search for his name because uh, uh, John Haydock uh, was considered very highly by, by some important critics, although he didn't build so much, but um, his thinking and his poetical uh, relationship with architecture and his uh, very uh, fruitful uh, presence in education since he ran Cooper Union in New York for many years uh, make uh, pe many people think that he was and is still, although he died, a very important presence in, uh, in uh, contemporary architecture. This is a drawing by uh, John Haydock. Now it's not a building, but he, he used to draw like this and uh, you know, what is on the left is death. What do we see here? We see the hourglass, clepsydra, you know, the passage of time. The sooner or later, the raven would enter our room as well. So, and we'll, we'll hear the same word, nevermore, nevermore. So we, I guess we should never forget this, that our life is limited and we shouldn't play games with it. Every second matters. It doesn't mean we shouldn't enjoy it, quite the opposite. We should enjoy it very much. We should love life, but we should value it and not spend it frivolously. Daniel Lipskin, who was the darling of, uh, of uh, John Haydock when he studied at Cooper Union, he has um, you know, certain, a certain darkness uh, in his work, so to speak, explicitly or implicitly. We are going to see uh, an image or two or three of a black building that he designed actually a home, a prototypical house. Um, you know, is it a raven? Uh, in a way it is, yes. A geometric uh, architectonic uh, raven by uh, Daniel Lipskind. The interior is not uh, ominous, but uh, you know, some people consider blackness as being ominous. Uh, in New York City, uh, you know, many, you know, even well-to-do people and also intellectuals and artists, they all dress in black. In fact, in East Hampton, uh, someone told me, we know when the summer came is when uh, everybody in West Hampton is dressed in black. Why? Because in the summer, New Yorkers go to East Hampton and because they love black and being dressed in black, the streets are filled with people dressed in black. Although it's known if you wear black when the sun is uh, strong, it's not quite the, quite the most uh, you know, uh, appropriate thing to do because it absorbs uh, heat a lot. Anyway, this is the building by uh, Daniel Lipskind. Um, not everything is perfectly black, but uh, it is black. It is black, and I think it's it's uh, it's uh, feeling, so to speak, is is connected with. Uh, and I know actually there is a picture on the web of Daniel Lipskin in his office with lots of books on the shelves behind him, and the only book that is uh, turned with its cover towards the viewer is with the poems of Edgar Allan Poe. I have that picture somewhere, and uh, it, 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 type in. Uh, Daniel Lipskin, the photographs, you'll come across it very soon, I'm sure. This is the plan of the house, which, you know, the section through the walls is black, but maybe the very meaning of the plan is somehow connected with the raven because it, 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 it's about being unsettled. It's about instability. The, the plan evokes instability and that instability, uh, some people might uh, perceive 
as being rather ominous. Now, the black replica of Le Corbusier's Villa Savoie in Camber. Can you believe it? Yes, the well-known, uh, celebrated Villa Savoie is white. But in Australia, in Canberra, they built a built replica. And here it is. It's Villa Savoie painted in black. It's all black. Because again, whiteness and blackness, they need each other. They are, it's like thesis and antithesis. You know, if you start with black, you make the next step white. If you start with white, you make the step, uh, the next step black. And uh, uh, since uh, Le Corbusier built first in 1928 Villa Savoie, in Australia, I don't know, maybe 80 years later or so, uh, built this uh, replica in, in black, painted black. Uh, sorry about the resolution here and here too. I didn't expect it to be so. Now this uh, WGNB uses an achromatic, achromatic color of black for partly triangular design fashion store in Seoul. I have more pictures with this building. I think it's an excellent building, destined, I mean, made for fashion. It's a fashion store, all black. And I think it's quite a, quite a good architecture. Uh, it's, uh, it's not a chapel for some demonic cult. It's not a, no, but it's very close and actually, the subject, you know, architecture and fashion, and even uh, religion and fashion, something that something that fashion replaced re religion. Well, we kind of see it here. You know, this building could have been if it was not black, but even if it is black, somehow has a mysteriousness that we might connect with what is called uh, the sacred. It's actually a fashion store, very scrupulously designed, and very uh, persistently uh, and consistently uh, black. Seoul. So what is the relationship between fashion and spirit? What is the relationship between fashion and architecture? Why is it that this building almost makes you think that it might be some kind, it could be some kind of a chapel, but it's not in a way through its function is the very opposite. It's destined for fashion. One peculiar thing here, but maybe conceptually or symbolically, it's not uh, to, to, to be ignored, is that this, the only thing that is green and rather alive is actually uh, lifted from the earth. A little bit uh, unsettling. Everything is black, even the, you know, the coffee machine or the copier or whatever it is here, all the, everything is black. But the light is not black, <laughs> and, uh, you know, except at night, of course, when the building is uh, lighting up. Look at those sneakers, you know, just uh, three pairs, I think, there. Uh, displayed uh, religiously. Um, so this is in Seoul. It looks like a mortuary chamber, it's true, but um, yes, patient sometimes um, flirts with the um, with what is called the mortuary.
Now, does fashion deserve this kind of interior? I don't know. I mean, as I said, some people think that fashion replaces religion or worship or faith. We, we like fashion, but uh, maybe we like so much fashion because we don't have we don't have what in the past, maybe remote past, religion uh, provided for us. So now we find refuge. And it's strange because religion is about eternity, is about permanence, and uh, the fashion is about the opposite, the ephemerality. It's about what is ephemeral, transitory. So we can reflect about this, the, the dichotomy, the, the dilemma between the two, religion or, or and, and and or uh, fashion. I guess the owner of the shop, uh, or uh, I see several faces there or two anyway, an interesting building, I would say in Seoul. And here are the, the elevations and the plants. Very well designed, actually. It's a it's a black uh, jewel. Okay, and now we go, this is a work I did uh, for the World Trade Center Memorial Gardens, but I didn't send it to, to New York at that time I was in Europe and the student helped me with the rendering. You know about the Memorial Gardens, it was about to pay homage to those 3000 and something people who died in the World Trade Center. So I thought of doing a forest of black, black columns and it was the idea was actually very simple. This was the, the site plan. The, the existing two towers, the twins, the twin towers of World Trade Center were here and here. And uh, what you see here is a mound uh, house diagonals. I you know geometrized the plan of one, one uh, World Trade Center was here and the other plan was here and exactly at the center of, uh, of that square that was the plan of one tower, I created, I imagined a mound, so the, 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 the land would be a little bit elevated here and right, right in the center, a continuously burning fire. And the same thing here. So large flames, urban flames, continuously burning. Everything else, a forest of columns with a column for each, person who died in the tragic event then. And on each black column to be incised a short biographical notice about that person. So in essence, it was to be a forest of black columns, black commemorative uh, 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 columns. Uh, the, the, <laughs> he had troubles to to, you know, uh, it was uh, many years ago and uh, we didn't know that that time how to make a flame. So you can see the flame is, uh, is drawn rather, you know, uh, inadequately. But, uh, you know, the, the idea is, is um, I would say, uh, transparent. And uh, he also made this perspective. Unfortunately, he placed this base I wanted the columns, but then he, he had to leave. He couldn't help me any longer. And that was the reason I also didn't send the work. These columns should be imagined without any base. So just emerging from the grass of the earth without any base. Black basalt and then wording uh, with the biography of the, each person who died. 3,000 and something columns. Now we go to a few images. I'm approaching the end of this presentation. Some years ago, I launched a competition for a new birth house for Adolf Hitler in Braunau am Inn in Austria, because Austria didn't know what to do with the house where the demonic baby was born, and uh, they kept it alive. And uh, there was increasing pressure on the on the country, on the government, to do something about that building. And I launched a competition 
what to do with that building to transform it so it will be like a, an anti-war statement through transforming the the building where adolf hitler was born and you'll see just a few images from projects that uh, i received like here for example you know the whole building the, the the proposal was to to cover it completely in black uh you know to obturate all the windows everything to be black and then in some way to post to post you know some sad you know uh, short-lived lives like this one uh you know because of the concentration camps and so on like here we see at age three she died in 1942 she was born in 1938 died in St. Petersburg in Leningrad because of the madness of war. The demonic baby, Adolf Hitler was born here, uh, uh, the third window from the left uh, uh, on, the, on the second floor, uh, on the third floor of the building. That's, that's where, uh, that's where the, the, the baby Hitler, uh, you know, started his life, so to speak. Uh, this is another image that was part of one of the proposals to, to make the whole building a, 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 a raven, a, a, a dark bird, an ominous building. So we would know, we would know what it means. Then uh, someone sent this proposal to have these bow windows emphatically uh, emerging from the body of the, of the building in a mortuary way, you know, again, announcing something ominous, dark, death, essentially. Or, yeah, I have other, you can, if you are interested to see these projects, you can see them on the website, uh, icarch.us. There are about 20, 25 projects there. Now, I will show something else that I did. It was on a Valentine's Day. Um, some, I don't know, a good number of some, some, some years ago when I was in love and it was, uh, I was in love in, a, in an impossible uh, uh, situation and uh, I was alone and sad and mad and I began to design houses of love. And this is one of them. <laughs> I designed about, let's call design them. They are just, you know, sketches, digital sketches. The house of love, or this is the house of tragic love or, uh, you know, uh, unreciprocated love or something like this. this. This would be the plan, very dark. I mean, the plan is not telling you yet the whole story. Uh, so the plan of the, of, the, of, the, of the unhappy love, that love that the French describe with the words, il n'y a pas d'amour heureux, there is no happy love. Well, that's what I felt and thought then, black, black like hell with some openings um well it's here is black on black you can't see much much more uh but you kind of get the feeling uh, love as a prison we are talking about love as a prison so even love could become uh dark when when it is uh, not working and when uh, yeah when it is restricting and uh, uh, you know, uh, we know, I think all human beings know about this. I, it's hard for me to believe that there are people who didn't go through at least one experience uh, of this sort. Uh, because it is a, a paradox in a way that love could become uh, unbearable when it, is, uh, when it is not working, so to speak. So, yeah, I could call it the prison of love. Black. Raven, but I, this was not the case with the uh, with Lenore uh, that uh, the poet Edgar Allan Poe loved. No, uh, well, there was tragedy there too. I think she died, and but he loved her very much. And you know, when when the beloved one disappears, love becomes even more intense, even more strong. So it's not really a prison in that case. But here it was a prison for me. It was a prison. Anyway, uh, and this is the last image of the of this uh, imperfect and uh, maybe maybe you think it was a long presentation. In a way, it was because of that text. But there are it's really really a, a beginning. I think black architecture 
uh, is a reality. There are many black buildings, uh, explicitly black or uh, implicitly black. Black. Here today I talk more about those explicitly black, but we could even extend the theme and talk about the pessimistic architecture. You know, how could we bring melancholia or pessimism or, uh, you know, psych psychic darkness into architecture? Not with the purpose of dwelling there, but with the purpose of actually arriving at light. Because as I said uh, to a student who was here from the very beginning, I like that quotation from the Romanian poet Nikita Stănescu, who said, darkening darkness, thus the gates of light. So if you want to arrive at light, you very often, if not always, have to go through darkness. So the more you darken darkness, the more you might have the, the chance to arrive at light. That is, if you survive going through intensified uh, darkness. But that's what the alchemists did too. They started with blackness, blackening, meaning nigredo. Then they went to albedo, which meant whitening. And then in the end, because the, the goal is to arrive at love, actually, at life, at the redness. So that's why the third phase in European alchemy was rubedo or reddening. So uh, our, our aspiration should, should be to go beyond blackness, beyond whiteness into redness, symbolically expressed or, uh, or indirectly or directly as a sign of life, that is, of love. This is an oil painting I did uh, many years ago. And uh, is it a raven? Is some kind of a shadowy figure? Is it a self-portrait? It could be, maybe. I don't know. I was just painting it on the floor like Jackson Pollock. I didn't know what I was doing, but I thought to end this uh, presentation today on architecture and the raven with it. So I thank you and uh, I welcome comments.